Crimson Desert was shown off once again during this year's Gamescom 2024 and my oh my does she look very smexy ladies and gentlemen. Gorgeous looking game with a lot of potential but this video is going to cover more than that. While researching the developers of Crimson Desert, their name is Pearl Abyss by the way, I realised that I'm already interested in yet another game of theirs called Doke V which I have also covered on this channel before and have gone down a bit of a rabbit hole to realize holy smoke this South Korean developer is actually amazing and I need to highlight their many upcoming games which is definitely worth keeping an eye out for. Now many of my subscribers know I was super excited for a little tiny game called Stellar Blade and this was for a number of reasons. Gorgeous graphics, sexy ladies making a return to the AAA space and supporting a Korean developer whose gaming values match my own. By that, I simply mean no political mumbo jumbo shoved in their game and so I supported it hard. Game turned out to be a lot of fun as well by the way, it wasn't supported just because of the ladies. Well, looks like the Koreans are on a roll yet again and while you know the name Shift Up, thanks to Stella Blade, it's now time to add Pearl Abyss to your list of developers to support. Now enough with the intro, grab a coffee, get comfortable, as we do what gamers do best and that is getting excited for some amazing looking upcoming games, starting with Crimson Desert. While the most recent videos of Crimson Desert may have brought your attention to the game thanks to Gamescom, the game itself was first revealed back in 2019. We are entering its fifth year of development and the game does not yet have a release date. The game promises a lot of features and easily stands out thanks to the use of their proprietary engine which gives cutting edge graphics to all of their games. And while that sounds like marketing talk, their games really do look amazing. The name of this magical engine is the Black Space Engine. A quote from their lead engine programmer is, it's our belief that amazing graphics and attention to detail determine the core quality of a game. After all, it's these details help create such an immersive experience. I appreciate the direct and simple explanation here. They know good graphics help. So we built our own and please enjoy, that's the unofficial explanation in my eyes. One feature that is noted and very apparent is the impressive draw distance you will see in their games. You can see much higher details and densities like forests like we have never seen before. Normally things in the distance get blurry, get focused, get downgraded, whereas in the distance in their games, the quality is oddly still quite high and is quite mesmerizing. Normally you need to downgrade those things so the game can be running properly, but they're on a mission. Now, I want to address some concern here, right? Because in this day and age, unfortunately, we live in a culture where it's very easy to be tricked by smoke and mirrors. After all, we're talking about two phenomenal looking games that are not out yet, that have been in development for a long time, and who knows, maybe it will never come out. Well, this is why I'm going to highlight something that the developer has already released. It's a popular game, visually looks fantastic, and that little game, or massive game I should say, is called Black Desert. Black Desert's existence is actually really important here because otherwise I would not be making this video about these developers Pearl Abyss because frankly it would, it would feel like a scam. It's like no no these games look fantastic, the footage looks mesmerizing, you're promising a million different features that I'm going to go over but uh, you know it's all cheap until it actually comes out. But the fact that Black Desert is an open world MMORPG that launched in 2017 is still playable today on Steam and the reviews are mostly positive with more than 56,000 reviews. Alright, awesome. We know the devs are legit. Have a track record is not hated across the internet. So let's get back into Crimson Desert now that we know it's safe to hype their upcoming games. Straight from their website and I quote, 
enter a war-torn realm of medieval fantasy where alliances are tested and heroes are made. Apart from the video gameplay I'm sure I captured and you are watching now as I speak, I'll tell you something that I have seen so far. I'll tell you everything that I've seen. I noted everything down while watching and there's just so much tasty goodness here. It's a third person open world RPG, so all the usual things are here. Different equipment and weapons, explore the gorgeous world, visit towns and buy more items, do lots of different quests, pet the cats and dogs on the way, as the trailer actually specifically shows off this feature, ride your horse into battles ranging from a few enemies to a literal war with explosions and bodies all over the place, stab, impale and sparta kick your enemies to the ground. I do love a good sparta kick and yeah the Greek inside me loves to see it too. Trip your enemies, grab hold of them and throw them by their legs into the air like you're a wrestler or something. Use your bow and arrow, slow down time when you jump in the air to get those shots in. Your player weapon can even be dropped and you can pick up enemy weapons that are dropped. So I'm assuming it's possible to disarm each other. That's actually very cool and thinking about it, you don't see much disarming in video games and that's a shame. Remember before I mentioned a wrestling throw? Well, I just watched another developer interview and the game does actually have moves directly inspired by wrestlers just because it looks cool. Man, when games are allowed to be games, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Speaking of which, very quickly, like always, if you believe that video games should be about escapism and not activism, please, please hit subscribe now to empower voices like mine that want to keep the purity of games intact. Thanks for listening and let's proceed with the video. Supernatural abilities seem to exist as well. There is a gliding function of some sort where your cape transforms you into a wreath of some sort. Whatever it is you transform into, it looks very handy and frankly, it just looks cool. You can grab enemies to hold them as hostage or use them as a human shield. There's even random martial arts in here as confirmed by the devs. And this is what modern gaming has been missing. It's possible to have realistic graphics, just like these guys are doing, because why not? Shiny stuff is awesome, but who said everything else has to be so realistic? These developers are saying, screw it. What is the coolest shite we can do? Let's have random wrestling moves and martial arts in the middle of a sword fight, because why not? That is the attitude I want to see more often. It's really put in the fun factor first. You can expect puzzles as well, uh, to make a show in, fight and ride dragons, explore dungeons, a rope can be seen that you can swing around sometimes and you can even use that rope to climb on top of much larger enemies. Word vomiting is pretty good I must say fellow gamers when you're excited about upcoming games and just like one feature, another feature, another feature, another feature. It's part of the fun. Another thing I noticed is some Mega Man type of gameplay. Did you just beat a lightning boss? Well, congratulations. Since you beat the lightning boss, now you have unlocked the ability to control lightning yourself. New skills and abilities have been confirmed to be able to be unlocked as you beat what the game calls trials. Now, I know you're all pumped for Crimson Desert, but the love for these South Korean developers can't stop here. There's another game they are working on that I want to go over called Doke V. Also, if you're subscribed, remember to hit the bell notification. Alright, prepare to unlock an ancient memory called your childhood. Two years after the initial reveal of Crimson Desert, Pearl Abyss in 2019 dropped a reveal trailer for Doke V a 3D third person game where you, and I quote, befriend adorable and whimsical Dokubi that gain strength from people's dreams and get ready to embark on an exciting adventure, end quote. This game is an explosion of color while also keeping an insane amount of detail and realism. That proprietary engine of theirs seems to be very flexible and it's hard to ignore anything that they showcase. Doke V has you in a fictional city by the beach and it's filled with people and cars all over the place. Play as children 
and the game seems to be split between two different fun times. The first seems to be about becoming a kid again. Explore the stunning environment using an insane amount of transport and of course, do tricks and look as cool as possible along the way. The list so far is having a bicycle, a skateboard, rollerblades, you can use boats, you get rocket shoes, umbrellas that let you float about like your Mary Poppins or something, and you can even continuously jump in the air like you're an anime character. There seems to be a strong emphasis on recapturing what being a kid is like. Those delightful blinkers we once had where everything was colourful and every moment we were awake was about having fun, since we never got tired back then. Of course, with all this colour, we have the ability to dress up and completely change how we look. I don't know if it's preset characters or built from scratch, but you can change your clothes, your glasses, your hats, your shoes and everything else so much that in the end your character will look unique for sure. That is the first part of Doke V. But there is another side and that is the combat. So while the game takes clear inspiration from Pokemon, that does not mean it's a turn-based game or follows a blueprint. You get to fight beside your Dokubi, they seem to be animal based, and you and your friends can attack enemies together. My favourite Dokubi seems to be a bear with gloves. I oh, know, it just looks cool. Your personal weapons seem to be inspired by kids toys as well. I've seen a super soaker, a massive toy hammer, a big boar thing you jump around with. These developers know how to stick to a theme and it seems everything is about getting lost in the moment. I love that two separate games that I've had my eye on by chance are actually getting worked on by the same developers. You can interact with other kids and I'll assume get objectives as well. The footage, while it is a pure delight to behold, gets extremely choppy and we don't have a release date for this one yet. However, friendly reminder, this was announced two years after Black Desert and that's likely to come out first. It seems the developer's style is to create the best worlds and ideas first and then take however many years is required to bring that vision to life. An observation I want to put out there is it seems like the reason South Korean devs are giving gamers what we want is they are more humbled and know they can't just expect sales. When a company like Ubisoft, for example, milks players for all they are worth, it's clear there is a sense of arrogance there. They seem to feel the support will be there no matter what, no matter how buggy, no matter how broken the game is, or no matter how paywall the experience is. Assassin's Creed Shadows seems to be a good example of that. I won't bother getting into the culture wall of that game, but needless to say, many people will not be supporting that game, myself included as well. I've just started replaying Ghost of Tsushima and that's a more respectful game from start to finish and frankly still looks astonishingly good. Ghost of Tsushima is worth playing if you have not already. Now, random Korean develop Random Korean developers? There is no promise of sales with anything they do and also their country is normally only focused on mobile game development. So this is out of the norm for them. As a result of this pressure though, they are putting everything they have into their games to hopefully get global interest. That's fantastic for us gamers and can set an example of respecting players' time and money around the world. We need to simplify gaming again and break it down to the word cool. Is it cool? What cool shite can you do? Wow, never done that before or never thought about mixing these two things together. Crimson Desert is not technically letting you do anything that has not been done before, if we combine the history of gaming. They are, however, bending the rules and clearly approaching things from the perspective of what would gamers enjoy. That game also has another part of it that I deliberately didn't mention earlier but serves as a good example to make my point. There are epic boss battles that remind me of the focus that Stellar Blade has and those type of games. If you saw the boss battles first, especially the one where you're fighting in the tall grass area, 
You would assume the game is super challenging and filled with these sort of encounters, but the other aspects is much more action focused and on a larger scale, normally reserved for different games. You're a knight in shining armor, and yet, feel free to break out martial arts or even wrestling moves because Pearl Abyss thought it was cool. And they are so darn right. The graphics are also insane, over the top, and would have increased the risk on return. They know cool stuff looks even better with great eye candy. So we have discussed two very different games here. The contrast between Crimson Desert and Dope V is pretty strong, but both clearly are giving it their all. They show confidence in their vision and a willingness to take however much time is required. Black Desert gives us the peace of mind that this is not all smoke and mirrors. They know how to release hugely ambitious games with stunning graphics. So when can we expect these two games? And I did mention some other games are in the works as well, which is true. Their website does show another game, but let's stay focused on Crimson and Doka V for this video. As I mentioned earlier, these games are running on their in-house engine, the Black Space Engine. This powerful engine is being built alongside these great games. So that takes time of course, and Crimson Desert will be the first to launch. After that game is out, all the features that were built and introduced to the engine will be immediately available for the development towards Doke V. And they can move more of their staff over to focus on that. It's actually a good thing they want to get Crimson right instead of spreading themselves too thin. Now, this video would have taken a lot of work from me. I'm not an editing whiz, so this took many, 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 many hours, even if the end result is like maybe 20 minutes or something for you. So at the very least, if you've lasted this long, please like the video, I do really appreciate it. And do subscribe before you go. And sound off below your excitement for either one of these two games. I think they look phenomenal. And I think whenever developers slash publishers are doing right by gamers, they deserve attention. They deserve to be highlighted. And when two separate games I was already excited for, turns out to be coming out from the same people, right. I need to reward them for that. I need to spread awareness for that. So then we can send a message to the gaming industry. They keep making it out like gamers are complex and we're always angry and this and that, and that is not true. We just want games to be games. Focus on fun, focus on pretty graphics, focus on everything except political messaging. I don't want to be reminded of the real world. We do not play video games to be reminded of pointless arguments that take place on Twitter slash X. I play video games to escape from all that rubbish. I don't want to be reminded of it. I want video games to feel like video games. I want cool shit just shoved in there because it's cool. Run with the fantasy, make us feel empowered, make us feel respected. And these developers seem to be doing just that. So hopefully I've done my part to spread awareness on, you know, maybe two games you didn't know were coming out. And I look really forward to seeing what these developers do in the future. Anyways, with that being said, God bless you all. Take care. And I'll see you lovely smexy ladies and gentlemen next time. All right. Bye-bye.